Imagine a banquet full of guests, each seeking their place of honor, while others, in the shadows, struggle to find value and belonging. Now, think of the barren fig tree, which, despite its promising appearance, bears no fruit. How many times have we felt this way, purposeless, like the lost sheep wandering far from the flock? And what about the coin that hides between the cracks, waiting to be rescued? These stories, so simple yet so profound, reveal truths about love, repentance, and the tireless pursuit of redemption. In the midst of these parables, we find the prodigal son, who, on his journey, teaches us about mercy and the joy of reunion. Each of these narratives is an invitation to reflection, where are we at the table? Are we lost, awaiting forgiveness, or do we deem ourselves worthy of a place of honor? Get ready, for each parable carries with it a hidden treasure, a lesson that can transform your view on life and faith. And in the end, will we be able to identify which one resonates most strongly in our hearts? Let's discover together. To understand the parables, it is essential to consider the historical and cultural context in which they were told. Imagine a society marked by deep religious and social traditions, where expectations regarding human behavior were shaped by strict norms. The parables emerge in this scenario as simple stories, yet full of profound meanings, always directed towards values that transcend time. The listeners, many of them peasants and fishermen, lived in a reality where the messages needed to be accessible and understandable. Additionally, first-century Palestine was a melting pot of cultural and religious diversity. Jews, Romans, and other ethnic groups coexisted, though not always in harmony. This context of oppression and hope, of faith and doubt, influenced how the stories were narrated. The parables, therefore, were not just tales, they were teaching tools that reflected the everyday lives, aspirations, and challenges of the listeners. Through these narratives, Jesus was able to address complex themes in a way that most could understand. It is interesting to note that the parables often addressed issues of social justice, compassion, and the relationship with God, elements that were vital to the Jewish community of the time. The culture of dialogue and orality was predominant, and stories were passed down from generation to generation. Thus, the parables not only educated but also preserved the history and identity of the people. This cultural and historical connection is crucial for a richer interpretation of the messages these stories carry. Religious traditions also played a significant role in understanding the parables. Judaism, with its laws and prophecies, shaped the thinking of Jesus and his followers. When he spoke of fig trees, shepherds, and banquets, the listeners could easily associate these images with their own spiritual experiences and expectations. Therefore, understanding this background is essential to grasp the essence of what the parables truly meant to the original audience. The approach of the parables was, in many ways, revolutionary. They challenged established norms and invited listeners to reflect on their own lives and their relationship with God. In this context, each story became a proposal for reflection and transformation, inviting each person to consider their role in the community and spirituality. Thus, the parables were not mere fables but powerful messages of hope and social change. The barren fig tree is a parable that deeply resonates with the history of the people of Israel. In it, Jesus uses the image of the fig tree as a powerful symbol, representing not only the nation but also spirituality and the expectation of bearing fruit. What many may not realize at first glance is that this fig tree, which bears no fruit, directly confronts the identity of a people who saw themselves as chosen by God. The fact that it is fruitless reveals a critique of the lack of action and the absence of a true spiritual relationship. When Jesus encounters the barren fig tree, he does not see it merely as a fruitless tree but as a metaphor for the spiritual condition of the people. This parable invites us to reflect on what it means to be truly productive in spiritual terms. The people of Israel expected to be seen as faithful and fruitful, but the reality was quite different. The barren fig tree, therefore, represents the need for introspection and the urgency of a change of heart. Furthermore, 
the interpretation of the barren fig tree raises questions about spiritual responsibility. Each individual, like the fig tree, has a purpose and a mission to fulfill in life. The parable challenges us to consider whether we are fulfilling our role in the community and in our relationship with God. Spiritual fruitfulness is not an isolated act, it is a reflection of our connection with the divine and with others. Thus, the barren fig tree becomes an invitation to reflect on our own lives and our capacity to bear fruit. This parable also highlights the importance of action and repentance. The barren fig tree can be seen as an opportunity for a new beginning. When we encounter the lack of fruit in our lives, we have the chance to turn to God and seek a new direction. The message is clear, the possibility of fruitfulness always exists, as long as there is a sincere desire for transformation. Thus, the barren fig tree is not just a symbol of failure but also a promise of hope and renewal. This barren fig tree teaches us that spiritual fruitfulness is a continuous process. It is not just about bearing fruit at a specific moment but about cultivating a relationship that leads us to a life of constant growth and transformation. This message echoes through generations, challenging us to be more than mere leaves on a tree, we are called to be fruits that feed and nurture those around us. One of the most central themes in Jesus' parables is mercy. This concept, so fundamental to understanding the divine character, is portrayed in various narratives that reveal God's compassion for His creation. The parables are not just moral stories, they reveal the essence of a God who cares deeply for each individual. This idea of mercy is particularly evident in parables like the prodigal son and the lost sheep, which show God's tireless search for those who are lost. In telling the parable of the prodigal son, Jesus illustrates the depth of paternal love, which not only forgives but also joyfully welcomes back. The son, after squandering his inheritance, returns repentant, and the father receives him with open arms, symbolizing divine mercy that never runs out. This image is powerful and touches the hearts of all who feel as though they have failed. The message is clear, no matter how far someone has gone, there is always room for repentance and reconciliation. From another perspective, the parable of the lost sheep highlights the value of each individual in God's eyes. The shepherd who leaves the ninety-nine sheep to seek the one that was lost is a direct representation of divine mercy. This active and dedicated search not only reveals the importance of each person but also emphasizes that God's compassion transcends social and religious norms. God's love is inclusive and seeks to restore those who are on the margins. Additionally, the parables not only speak of God's mercy but also challenge us to act similarly in our own lives. Compassion should be a natural response to the experience of divine love. When we recognize the mercy we have received, we are called to extend that same grace to others. The parables teach us that true mercy is not just a feeling but an action that manifests in how we treat our fellow human beings. The message of mercy present in the parables is an invitation to personal transformation. As we encounter the stories, we are challenged to reflect on how we deal with the failure and pain of others. Mercy is not just an isolated theme. It is a way of life that calls us to be agents of change in a world that can often be cruel and indifferent. Thus, the parables invite us to be not only receivers of mercy but also transmitters of it. Repentance is a central concept in Jesus' parables, and its presence is particularly notable in the narratives of the prodigal son and the lost sheep. These stories not only depict human failure but also offer a hopeful vision of the possibility of redemption. Repentance, therefore, is more than just a simple acknowledgement of error, it is a vital step towards reconciliation and transformation. For the listeners of that time, this idea might have sounded revolutionary, especially in a context where guilt and shame often dominated relationships. In the parable of the prodigal son, the act of repentance is the key that opens the doors to forgiveness and acceptance. The son, realizing that his life in his father's house was much better than his current situation, decides to return. This decision is not easy, it involves an honest acknowledgement of his failures and the courage to face the consequences. Repentance here is seen as a path of return to the home, 
a return to the relationship with the Father who represents God. On the other hand, the parable of the lost sheep exemplifies repentance through active seeking. The lost sheep does not repent in the same way as the prodigal son, but the shepherd's search symbolizes God's initiative in finding us. This narrative reveals that even when we are lost, God is always seeking us, waiting for us to make the decision to return to the right path. Repentance, in this case, is an invitation to awareness of our situation and the desire for change. The parables, in their essence, are not just simple stories. They carry a critical weight that challenges the social and religious norms of the time. In parables like the place of honor and the great banquet, questions arise about social hierarchy and how people relate to one another. The pursuit of status and prestige is a constant in human interactions, and often, this leads to a disregard for the needs of others. Through these narratives, we can see how Jesus opposed these conventions, promoting a vision of equality and inclusion. In the parable of the place of honor, the critique is clear, the desire to be in high positions in society brings consequences that can be embarrassing. The idea of being invited to the highest places, only to be lowered later, is a powerful metaphor. This message resonates in today's reality, where many still seek to value appearance and social status over the true essence of the human being. The invitation to sit in the lowest places is a call to humility, a reminder that what truly matters is not appearances but integrity and character. Similarly, the Great Banquet presents a critique of social exclusion. The story portrays a host who, realizing that the first-year guests did not attend, decides to invite the marginalized and the excluded. This action not only breaks social norms but also redefines what it means to be invited to a banquet. Here, the message is clear, the kingdom of God is inclusive, and those who are despised by the world are often the ones closest to the divine essence. Moreover, the behavior of the characters in the parable serves as a mirror for society. Those who consider themselves righteous are often the ones most distant from true love and compassion. The parables challenge these patterns, highlighting the need for internal transformation that goes beyond mere rule following. This social critique is a call to reflection on how our actions and decisions can perpetuate inequalities or promote justice and inclusion. In this way, the social critique present in the parables is not just a reflection on the past but an invitation for each of us to examine our own attitudes and values. By confronting social and religious norms, Jesus urges us to build a more just and welcoming community where everyone, regardless of social position, can find a safe and loving space. Addressing divine justice in the parables is to dive into one of the most profound questions of theology. The stories told by Jesus often reveal how God's justice does not align with human expectations. In the parable of the workers in the vineyard, for example, the idea that all the workers, regardless of how long they worked in the vineyard, receive the same reward, provokes reflection on what justice really means. This narrative destabilizes the human logic of merit and reward, challenging the harmfulness of comparisons. Divine justice, as portrayed in the parables, is based on generosity and grace. The owner of the vineyard pays everyone equally, regardless of their hours of work, symbolizing that God's love is not conditioned by merits or efforts. This leads us to a deeper understanding that grace is offered to all, not just to those who strive more or who consider themselves worthy. The message is clear, God's justice transcends human logic, inviting us to rethink our own notions of merit and reward. On the other hand, the parable of the prodigal son also illustrates the dynamics of divine justice. The return of the son, who had squandered his inheritance, and the warm reception from his father show that, in God's eyes, mercy prevails over judgment. Divine justice is not punitive but restorative, always seeking the return of what was lost. This approach invites us to reflect on how we apply justice in our own lives and relationships. Instead of seeking punishment, we must be agents of restoration. Furthermore, the parables often reveal that divine justice is not a matter of mathematical calculation but of a loving relationship. Love is the foundation of God's justice, 
and this translates into actions that promote the well-being and dignity of all. The way we treat others, especially the marginalized, reflects our understanding of divine justice. Jesus invites us to act with compassion and to understand that every person is valuable and worthy of love and respect. The relationship between divine justice and human experience is complex, but the parables offer a hopeful vision. They remind us that even when injustices seem to prevail, God's justice is at work, seeking to restore and reconcile. This vision broadens our understanding of what it means to live in community and challenges us to be instruments of justice and love in a world often marked by inequality. Forgiveness is a central theme in the parables, permeating the narratives in a deep and transformative way. In the parable of the prodigal son, the dynamics of forgiveness are richly explored. The son, upon returning after living a wayward life, finds a father who does not hesitate to receive him with open arms. The father's readiness to forgive and celebrate the son's return is a reflection of the unconditional love that God has for all of us. This message is powerful because it teaches us that forgiveness is not just an act but an expression of love that seeks to restore relationships. The lost sheep also highlights the prominence of forgiveness. Here, the idea that a single lost being is of extreme importance reveals the nature of divine love. The shepherd who leaves the ninety-nine sheep to seek the one that was lost illustrates God's obsession with each of us. Forgiveness, in this context, is not a mere formality but an act that reiterates the dignity and value of each individual. This understanding invites us to be more compassionate and attentive to the needs of others, especially those who feel lost or devalued. Forgiveness in the parables is not just about the relationship between the offender and the offended but also about the liberation of the heart. When we forgive, we not only free the other person but also free ourselves from emotional burdens that imprison us. Jesus teaches us that the act of forgiving is a path to healing and inner peace. This understanding is vital in a world where resentments and hurts often accumulate, creating barriers that distance us from true connection with others. Additionally, forgiveness in the parables is a call to action. It is not enough to wait for the other to repent in order to offer forgiveness, the attitude of forgiving must be proactive. Jesus challenges us to love our enemies and to pray for those who persecute us, emphasizing that forgiveness should be a continuous practice, not just a reaction to offenses. This approach transforms our relationships and helps us cultivate an environment of peace, where love prevails over hate. In short, the prominence of forgiveness in the parables teaches us that by forgiving, we are imitating God's love. This imitation is a call to action that invites us to live in harmony and to seek reconciliation in all our relationships. The parables show us that forgiveness is a powerful force that can transform lives, communities, and ultimately, the world around us. The parables are rich in symbolism, and the characters that inhabit them play fundamental roles in conveying their messages. Each figure, from the loving father in the parable of the prodigal son to the diligent shepherd in the lost sheep, carries profound meanings that help us understand the spiritual truths Jesus wanted to convey. The father, for example, symbolizes the loving and welcoming nature of God, who is always ready to receive those who repent. The characters representing the marginalized, like the guests at the great banquet, are equally significant. They symbolize those who are often forgotten or despised by society. By choosing these characters, Jesus highlights the importance of inclusion and compassion, challenging the social norms that exclude and divide. This choice is an invitation for everyone to realize they have a place in God's kingdom, regardless of their circumstances. Another interesting aspect of the symbolism is the representation of adversaries. Often, the Pharisees and religious leaders are portrayed negatively, symbolizing the rigidity and hypocrisy that can arise in religious structures. This critique serves as a warning about how religiosity can become an obstacle to true spirituality, leading to condemnation instead of compassion. By creating characters that reflect these qualities, Jesus invites us to examine our own attitudes and avoid falling into the trap of self-righteousness. In the parables of the great banquet and the lost sheep, the message of inclusion and welcome shines brightly. 
The Great Banquet, for example, presents a scene that challenges the social norms of the time. The host, realizing that the initially invited guests did not attend, decides to invite the marginalized, those who were often ignored by society, the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. This attitude reveals a deep desire to welcome everyone, regardless of their social status or condition. It is as if the author of the parable is saying, do not forget that everyone has a place at the table. This inclusion is not only physical but also spiritual, reinforcing the idea that divine grace is for everyone. On the other hand, the parable of the lost sheep illustrates the shepherd's tireless search for a single sheep, even though he has 99 safe ones. This narrative evokes a strong message that no one should be left behind, especially those who feel lost or excluded. The shepherd represents the divine figure who cares deeply for each individual, no matter how insignificant they may seem. This idea is revolutionary, as it challenges the mindset that only the righteous or the chosen are worthy of attention and love. The inclusion of the marginalized is, therefore, one of the central messages of these parables. The message of inclusion is also reflected in the way Jesus interacted with the marginalized of his time. He didn't just tell parables about inclusion, he surrounded himself with people who were considered impure or undesirable by society. This practice demonstrates that inclusion goes beyond words, it is an action that requires compassion and empathy. He was, in fact, modeling the behavior he wanted to see in his followers and future communities. Inclusion is a fundamental value that permeates all of Jesus' teachings. Moreover, the inclusion of the marginalized in the parables is a powerful critique of elitism and social exclusion that often permeates religious communities. By emphasizing that everyone is welcome, Jesus was challenging the social norms that often marginalized the less fortunate. This provokes important reflection on how contemporary communities welcome or exclude people based on their social, economic, or spiritual condition. The parables invite us to examine our own attitudes toward the marginalized in our lives. The inclusion of the marginalized in the parables is not just a matter of social justice, it is a matter of love and compassion. The stories remind us that, in a world that often divides and separates, the true essence of Jesus' teaching is to unite and welcome. The message is clear, everyone is worthy of love, respect, and dignity, and it is our role as human beings to seek this inclusion in our own lives. The contrast between wealth and poverty is a recurring theme in the parables, offering deep reflections on the use of material goods and the pursuit of spiritual values. In several of these narratives, wealth is often presented not as an end in itself but as a means that can easily become a trap. The parable of the rich man and Lazarus, for example, shows how wealth can blind a person to the needs of others. The rich man, living in opulence, ignores Lazarus, a beggar at his door. This greed and indifference toward others result in eternal consequences, underscoring the idea that what truly matters is not material wealth, but compassion and solidarity. On the other hand, the figure of Lazarus represents those who, despite their poverty, have an intrinsic value that cannot be measured in material terms. The parable suggests that the kingdom of God is more accessible to the poor and marginalized because they often have a greater dependence on divine grace. This idea is an invitation to reflect on true wealth, which does not reside in the accumulation of goods but in the capacity to love and serve others. The contrast between the rich and the poor is, therefore, a powerful critique of how society values material status over spiritual virtues. Additionally, the parable of the hidden treasure and the pearl of great value illustrates the idea that the true value of life lies in spiritual things. The search for the kingdom of God is presented as an investment that is worth it, even if it means giving up material goods. What stands out here is the transformation of the perspective of value, what was once considered precious now becomes secondary in the face of the discovery of something infinitely more valuable. This change in perspective is essential to understanding what Jesus was trying to teach about the world and life's priorities. The parables also lead us to reflect on the responsibility that comes with wealth. 
The rich man who harvests a great crop and decides to build bigger barns to store his wealth is a classic example of how greed can lead to self-sufficiency and the neglect of others' needs. The message is clear, wealth should be used for the common good and to help those in need. The parable challenges us to consider how we use our own resources and how we can be agents of change in our communities. The contrast between wealth and poverty in the parables invites us to reassess our priorities and values. In a world that often exalts materialism, Jesus' stories offer a powerful reminder that true wealth is found in generosity, love, and the pursuit of a higher purpose. The message is timeless, resonating in our days and challenging us to live in a way that reflects the values of God's kingdom. The parables have the power to provoke a significant transformation in the worldview of their listeners. Through simple yet profound stories, Jesus presents new ways of understanding life and faith. This change in perspective is especially evident in narratives like the prodigal son, where the idea of repentance and acceptance challenges conventional notions of justice and deservingness. The son who strays and squanders his inheritance is welcomed with open arms by the father, symbolizing the grace that surpasses our failures. This twist in the story invites us to reconsider how we view failure and forgiveness and how we can apply this in our own lives. Another parable that illustrates this change in perspective is the lost coin. Here, the tireless search of the woman for a single lost coin reflects the importance of what we normally consider insignificant. This narrative teaches us that every person has intrinsic value and that the search for those who are lost is a priority. This new way of looking at people around us can lead us to value each individual rather than just those who are in the spotlight or in positions of power. The change in perspective that the parables bring is an invitation to look beyond appearances and recognize the value of every human being. Moreover, the parable of the Good Samaritan challenges the social norms and prejudices of the time. By presenting a Samaritan, a marginalized and despised group by the Jews, as the true neighbor, Jesus provokes a re-evaluation of the definitions of love and compassion. This change in perspective teaches us that true kindness transcends cultural and social barriers, and that we must be open to act with love, regardless of who our neighbor is. Thus, the parables force us to confront our prejudices and expand our understanding of what it means to live a life of service and compassion. The transformation of worldview is also reflected in how the parables address the idea of happiness and fulfillment. The parable of the rich fool, who thinks that security and satisfaction lie in his material goods, warns us of the futility of seeking happiness in fleeting things. The message is clear, true fulfillment comes from a deep relationship with God and with others. This change in focus can be liberating, allowing us to break free from the chains of materialism and seek a life that truly resonates with our deepest values. The change in perspective that the parables promote is a constant invitation to reflection and action. They challenge us to look at our own lives and consider how we can be agents of change in our communities. By adopting this new vision, we are encouraged to live more authentically, generously, and lovingly, reflecting the values of God's kingdom in a world that often forgets them. The parables show us that change is not only possible but necessary for a full life. Perseverance is a fundamental theme in the parables of the lost coin and the lost sheep, where the tireless search for what was lost becomes a powerful metaphor for hope and determination. In the parable of the lost sheep, the shepherd does not hesitate to leave 99 safe sheep to seek out the one that strayed. This. And so, as we reflect on these parables, we are invited to see beyond the words. Each one brings a powerful message about love, repentance, and redemption. Have you ever stopped to think about which of these stories resonates most with your life? The barren fig tree reminds us of the importance of bearing fruit. Are we, indeed, making the best use of the time that God has given us? And when we talk about banquets, are we occupying the place that was truly intended for us? Or are we getting lost in the pursuit of approval from others? Ah, and the lost sheep and the lost coin, what a beautiful representation of the Father's tireless search for each of us. Have you ever felt lost at some point? How was your journey back? And finally, 
the prodigal son, who teaches us about grace and forgiveness. Imagine what it is like to return home after a long period away. What a wonderful feeling. So, which of these lessons will you carry into your life today? What changes are you willing to make? Leave your reflections in the comments, and let's talk about it. After all, the journey of faith is always richer when shared.